Hi, I'm Larry Dapsis. I'm the entomologist with Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. And in this segment, we're going to talk about Lone Star Tick, the new tick in town here on Cape Cod. It's taken up residence, very happy, very different tick, and we want to share some of that information ab about that. Um, here are pictures of the adult female and the adult male. The adult male on the left, basically easy to identify, is basically all black, and we really don't care about adult male ticks because they don't um, suck blood, all right? The adult female, very characteristic white dot in the middle of her back. The other way you can distinguish these guys is their behavior. Um, unlike other ticks that kind of just lumber along slowly, these guys can run. They're like little race cars. Pretty impressive stuff. All right, this guy has been moving north for a number of years. A number of ecologists think this is a function of climate change. Sure, we're, the earth is getting warmer. We're seeing plants and animals where we never used to see them before. And up until about 2012, the northernmost established points of Lone Star Tick that we were aware of were on the islands of Nashon and Cuttyhunk and Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. But in 2012, I was called out to Sandy Neck Beach Park. The, the park staff and, and Cape Cod Mosquito Control employees, they were seeing something very different that didn't match up with either deer ticks or dog ticks. So they called me out there, and that's a six mile long peninsula. And when I started sampling, I found Lone Star Tick from one end of that place to the other. They basically own that piece of real estate. And so it suggests that they've been here for some time. It's just that we didn't really uh, find them or, or look for them. In fall of 2017, I was called out to the Shining Sea Bike Trail in West Falmouth. We found another established population out there. So what I think has been happening is that migratory birds have introduced this. That Sandy Neck Beach Park is perfect flyway for migratory birds. So you can just imagine birds stopping off on Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, picking up some, you know, Lone Star ticks and then stopping off in Sandy Neck and they drop off, lay eggs, and off we run. And then as it's popping up in different parts of the Cape, we suspect that once it's established that there are certain animals that are probably moving this thing around. Now, Lone Star Tick, unlike deer ticks, they don't like small creatures like mice and voles and shrews. They prefer more intermediate size hosts. So at the Shining Sea Bike Trail, um, I put out surveillance cameras to kind of see, all right, what are the types of creatures that might be moving along that highway and potentially dropping off ticks? And what we saw is wild turkeys. Yeah, in fact, where you see that flock of turkeys, um, that's where we picked up a bunch of Lone Star ticks, so they were very well established there. And I would see this flock moving north on one day morning, and then a few days later they'd be coming south. And you can imagine that Lone Star tick females might be falling off these, laying their eggs, and reestablishing the population. Now it's interesting to see the turkey finding because when they were first describing or naming the Lone Star tick, they almost named it the turkey tick because that's a preferred host. Uh, other good hosts for Lone Star Tick? Yeah, bunny rabbits and stuff. They're a good host and can certainly move these things around. Uh, coyotes, sure. Um, they showed up on the picture. Easily think about them moving it along. And a very dapper Bigfoot out for a morning stroll. So that's why I became a scientist. You go out and look for data. You just don't know what you're going to find. All right. This thing is different in other respects. It's an aggressive biter. So it can run and it will chase you. These things, if they see you from 20 feet away, they're gonna come rolling at you. Unlike other ticks that kind of wait around and wait for di uh, dinner to bump into them. So the adult female Lone Star Tick, like other adult female ticks, she lays her eggs in a cluster. And that cluster might be four or 5,000 eggs. And when they hatch out in late summer, say August into September, you end up with these very high concentrations of larvae. And these things are only, they're less than a millimeter long. So you can hardly, hardly see them. And with this great concentrated mass, if you're strolling along and you happen to bump into one, generally you meet most of the family in a few minutes. And within a few minutes, you can have two or 300 bites. 
Now, lone star tick larvae don't transmit pathogens that cause diseases, but these things will itch for a month to six weeks, even with um, cortisone. So while they don't transmit the pathogens that causes Lyme disease, they've got their own unique set of diseases, so ehrlichiosis and tularemia, which can both be quite serious, and stari, a type of rash disease with flu-like symptoms, pretty easy to treat. Now, the other aspect of this thing that's quite interesting and, and a little scary is that we look at this carbohydrate, uh, galactose 1,3-galactose, uh, alpha-gal. This is a sugar or carbohydrate that's unique to red meats. And it is found now, or known now, that if a lone star tick transmits that into your bloodstream, you're gonna, some people with sensitivities are gonna build uh, antibodies to this, and you end up with an allergic reaction that can range from hives all the way to anaphylactic shock. And so basically, it's a red meat allergy. And it's not just beef, but it's pork, lamb, and even beef byproducts like beef-derived gelatin. And if you think about the processed foods we eat, beef-derived gelatin is in a lot of different food products, including those marshmallows we feed our kids on 4th of July. Now, deer tick habitat, we've gone through this before in another segment, that you're not gonna find deer ticks out in the middle of an open lawn, okay? Short grass, direct sunlight, high temperatures, that's just hostile, deer ticks don't live out there. But lone star tick habitat, yeah, these guys, we find these out in open conditions. So as we think about the spread of lone star tick, we have to start thinking forward about our yard protection strategy. Instead of a perimeter yard spray for deer ticks, we might have to be considering uh, treating the entire lawn, but we're not there yet. So this is my contact information. Um, always open for business. I encourage people to contact me through phones or email. Um, and we'd like to thank Cape Cod Healthcare for their generous financial support for this project.